Cheers. Cheers. Mason jar twins. Whoop. Tat twins. Man, we're just twinning all the way. <laughs> what, is your what does your shirt say? Mine doesn't say anything. I can. I can. I will. End of story. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, so, let's talk. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I had in my, in my notes to talk to you about is a while back you mentioned, like, you know, understanding how people think who are like resistant or who are making all sorts of excuses and things. And you said like, yeah, I used to be there. Mm -hmm. And the, the phrase used to is really interesting to me because it's so powerful. It's such a powerful like cleaver of identity. Like mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, I still struggle with this or yeah, I still like I used to. And it puts it in the past, distances it, turns it into um, like something that Mia, my wife, said at the at the retreat was basically like certain parts of her past feel like a book she read a long time ago <clears throat> rather than alive in her. And I'm curious about your experience of how do you get to used to like I used to do all those other things or I used to think that way. Well, I guess I would say it's like constant, you know, practice on yourself. Like this is really interesting that we're having this conversation because a couple things have been coming up from my past that I've been like understanding, right? So I just recently, like there was somebody I knew in my past and he just, um, passed away from addiction, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like I got to kind of like look at my life, you know, back then when I was addicted to drugs and, um, you know, and alcohol and all these things. And it just like, it just, I just had so much gratitude because I mean, what if I was still in those, like with those people, right? Like, could I have been that person that then was like, Oh, Sarah Bowfinger passed away yesterday, you know? Mm. Like, I mean, so like, so I guess where I'm, I'm looking at this is like, you know, I just, there were so many times that I would say that I wanted to kill myself. And it was like, just, it's almost like, like you train yourself to a certain degree. And then there's like this other thing that's like rooting for you. You know what I mean? Like there's this, there's this reason that you're here. And a lot of us like maybe don't get to experience that, you know, does that make sense? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Well, so I'm trying. Like, so basically, what I'm understanding for myself is that, like, you know, there are so many times that over and over and over, like, I didn't want to live on this planet anymore, and so mm. I would say it over and over and over. And but I. I never had the guts to maybe do it, right? There was something in me that was like, no, you know? And so I guess where I'm stating this is that, like, there's always been something in me that's, like, telling me to do better, to go further, to be better. And so with me being used to do this and used to do that, like, I just think that there's just this forward momentum that's just been being created the more that I just look at myself, I admire myself, I just constantly am proud of myself, like with everything that I've gone through, it's allowed me to just shift into this like, oh, like, wow, that was me. Like, I couldn't have even imagine mm. like, because <laughs> I can't even see myself there. Now, like Mia was saying, like, it's a, a different book. Like, I, I don't even like relate to that anymore, you know. And so when I heard of this person's passing, like it allowed me to go back there and actually experience myself there and like how that was like a really sad time. And like, I'm so grateful that I'm not there and I can look at it and move past that. Mm. Yeah, it reminds me of something Josh said yesterday. So yesterday um, 
he got a late flight home. So we had, you know, the retreat ended on Sunday and we were together pretty much all day on Monday. And we're start we were talking Monday morning about how we want to move forward. And we want to do next. And it kind of came up in conversation that there was a there was about 20 minutes of talking that happened at the retreat that Josh was kind of leading that blew my mind. Um, and we and so I said, hey, we should do a book on this. And we uh, and, and immediately were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, a book, like <laughs> that sounds like work. Uh -huh. Last time, like, you know, we had we, we had conversations and I had them transcribed and then I wrote it out and I made like 25 different drafts and then it was OK. And then we had a print book and then we got together and read it for three days to make the audible. And this time, you know, suddenly we had the idea, let's just do the audible with no, you know, and just have Josh talk. Yeah. And so we wrote, we wrote a book. And when I say we, I mean, I turned on the, on the I turned on the microphone and Josh just talked for like oh, four wow. hours. But one of the things <laughs> one of the things he said was and it was basically about like talking to fat people who want to become fit, like specifically people who are obese. Mm -hmm. and it's like it's not that you you're this big fat guy or gal who's trying to get thin says you are a fit person trying to get out. And hmm. that that looking back on the you know, the year 2012 when he started his transformation, he feels such incredible gratitude, like tear him up gratitude for the big failure of a fat guy who had dropped out of college who was working, you know, jobs that he felt were beneath him, who had been dealing drugs, who was kind of like throwing away all his potential. Like that was the guy who got him to where he is now. That mm -hmm. was the guy who did all the hard stuff <clears throat> and, and identifying not with the externals, but with the person in that in that fat suit, in that fat environment, in that mindset who was willing to take the first step. And it sounds like what, something what you're saying is like, you, you know, like, why didn't I kill myself? Maybe I didn't have enough guts, but maybe there was something in me like there was something in you at that point that did all the work. Mm hmm. To get me mm -hmm. to where I am now, because I would have never gotten to where I am now without all of that. Right. And, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and now people look at you and go, oh, my God, Sarah, you're amazing. How do you do it? I wish I could be like you. I, I you know, but you're special. I can't. Be. But you are much less impressive <clears throat> than the Sarah who took that first step. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Yeah. Uh huh. Because I wouldn't have. And it's like, you know, you're and when I was taking those first steps, I didn't know that this would be like this would relate to that, right? Just like Josh, I'm sure when he was doing that, like he didn't think that he was going to like inspire all these people and do all <laughs> all these things that he's done, you know? But it's like, but what if like there's so much potential out there just by taking that first step, you know, just by somebody allowing them to fail, get back up, do it again, you know, keep on going and just seeing what what you create out of that. Yeah, it's almost like that that one step by itself is nothing. But but if you keep going, that one step has changed your trajectory. And the farther you go, the farther you are from the destination you were originally headed for. It's like if I, you know, if I'm on an airplane and we're one degree off at the end of the runway, you might not even notice. But at the end of a transatlantic flight, you're either in, you know, London or Paris. Mm hmm. Right. Like that. Exactly. It makes a huge difference when when that first step, when it when it compounds, when you do the one step after another. Yeah, I mean, totally. And, it, and it's just like and it's fascinating, like even how the body can hold that even the past energy that you you know, have within you, because like now that I'm like, you know, moving on up, I'll say, and then the levels are concerned is just like for myself, right? Like I'm just mm -hmm. getting stronger and better and more like aware of like 
what I'm doing, right? And so now, like, anything that is in my past that isn't, you know, helping me now has to be released, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, there's, like, um, like, last week, and it's so funny, like, every time we have these conversations, they manifest into my reality, whether it's, like, a breakdown that I just, like, just have I'm just going with you know or like an experience that like okay I'm understanding what it is to fail and get back up and and do it again whatever it is so whatever we're talking about I'm excited to see what else I'll <laughs> I'll experience this week but one um thing that I went through this week was like I just noticed that like there was on Thursday like I had you know, I'm pushing my body um, a lot more, like I'm having to do, not having to, but I'm wanting to do a lot more, right, to get to where I'm going. So the training is like increasing. And so I got a little scared. And so my coach was like, hey, I want you to up this, we're going to do all this, you know, so then the next day, body doesn't want to move. And I literally just like, cry just like spend all day crying you know but like what was great about this was I was able to notice that I just needed to feel those feelings you know versus Mm -hmm. like before maybe like I mean there were things coming up like oh should I give up like I don't know if I can do this you know but then it's like oh my gosh like every time like if I feel like giving up like oh this is just another like step for me to then go to where I want to go, you know, cause I hadn't really felt those feelings since like, I mean, probably four years ago, like when I thought I was going to be homeless and I had said I was going to the Olympics and then everything was falling apart, you know? And, and it was like, I literally felt like that. But like this time I was just like, Oh my gosh, like I'm feeling this because like it's ready to be released. And so now I can like, release it and move on up. And so then like, I've just been having some great, great days and, and just knowing that like, if it is going to come up again, it's there to be let go of. It's not me anymore. It's not a piece of me that I identify with. And so it can't be in my body anymore, you know? Mm. And that's, that's, it feels very liberating in terms of used to, because people will go, well, I used to, but I still feel it. Like I still have these impulses and I still have these thoughts. There must be something wrong with me. Like it's almost like, well, the surgery didn't work. The, the cancer is still there. Right. But that's not how it is. Right. There's- no, they're still going to be there. But like a lot of times, like we push these feelings down to the point where like we're just like, like if somebody comes up to you and says, how are you doing today? And they're like, oh, oh, I'm good. But like, there's probably something on their mind, right? That they're like, I'm not really good. Like, Mm. actually, like I could talk it out or, you know, um, just let it out. So, or cry or whatever it is that you, you know, that you need to do so that you can allow it to be released. And it just feels so much better because I, like, I was just like, really like this is just what's going on right now and I couldn't even be upset with myself because I knew that this was passing like there were some deep like things in me that I hadn't released in a while and like if I'm going to the next level of training and going somewhere I've never been I can't carry that extra luggage that I've been carrying you know it's time for it to go and so I'm somebody that's always buried my, you know, emotions and trying to be like the tough person. Oh, it's all great, you know, but there's also a piece of it that it's important to feel those feelings, to let them go so that you can move on up to those new thoughts of thinking, to those new feelings of, yes, I can versus old ways of patterns that you've adapted throughout your life, you know? Mm, mm. And I'm really curious, like, you know, you're you're very in the moment in these conversations and you're always like sunshine, like always positivity. I would love to catch you during one of these <laughs> low periods. For, you know? I know, right? Well, and it's funny because like, so Mike, Mike's like, man, like I need to get you on camera right now because... <laughs> Who is this person, you know? And it's like, and and what's great is like, 
you know, before, like, if I had, like, these moments, like, I would always, like, blame the out scarier, right? But, like, now it's just, like, I'm just, like, I'm good. Like, there's, I just have to get through this, you know, kind of um, just understanding the process that I'm going through. Like, with Mike, I'm just, like, do you ever, like, get mad or upset or, like, how, like, everybody's different, right? Like, everybody clears things that they go through differently and it's like he is just one person that can just like kind of skate through life and just like learn from his mistakes and like you know keep it going but like I'm someone that sometimes is like okay let's like go on the wave of mer goddess you know and see like where this um takes me so and they're not as many like I mean this is what happens like the more that you clear it out and stuff you're not gonna you know, you're not going to have all that all the time. Now it's like, I know how to balance it. I know that this, there's a reason for it. And so you would have had to catch me like a couple weeks ago. (laughs) (laughs) Now I learn from it. Like Uh you can't catch me now. (laughs) Well, you know, the, the mermaid has to live in both worlds, right? The sunny world and has to submerge in the depths. Exactly. So this is why I, um, I'm this is my journey to dive deep into those ugly parts. I mean, there's still right. There's a lot. I still feel like there's more that's going to be released, especially Mm. like things about money. You know, that is something Mm. that is like through my like generations before me, you know, that I just feel is, you know, in there. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm just understanding what it is and that I don't have to think about it. And I can, um, like just, I'm like, right now I'm starting to like imagine like, okay, what if, you know, money flows to me easily and what does that look like? And I'm a mer goddess and this is what I do. And like, so this is like part of the process, you know? And so it's, I've been able to create, you know, money, out of thin air continuously. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to clearing more of that so I can see more and more um, for myself, you know, just because a lot of times, like, when we, like, do our own journey, like, we, we're we like, how is the money going to come, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm comfortable being mer goddess. I love sharing my journey with others. I love inspiring people. This is what I do, right? And so it's like, oh, but in, like, this world, right? It's like, wait, but you like somebody's not giving you a check. So like, how do you do it? You know? And so like, I feel like this is just another like, important lesson for me to teach everyone that like, you know, there is a way like if you really are passionate about something and everything that you're doing, it can be created, you know, right. however it is. Right. And I, I, I want to like highlight that this is not a lesson just that, let's say, poor people need to learn, right? The people who don't have enough money. Like, I kind of feel like this is the lesson that Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates need to learn. Like, if they truly believed I can make money out of thin air, they wouldn't need to be so stingy with it. They, you know, they like Jeff Bezos could pay his people a better wage and give them health insurance. Exactly. (laughs) So there's a, you know, there's a political dimension to this as well. We're not just saying like, oh, if only poor people had the right attitude, they would have money. Like we need we need everyone on board to have an attitude of faith. Right. Because because greed is just fear. Right. Yeah. And it's it's, it's not and it's also not helping your fellow neighbor. Like if we're all helping each other, by you collecting, like hoarding, like collecting this amount and then not allowing somebody else to at least have, you know, so that they can be happy as well with what they're doing, right? Because they're doing something for you that in change, like, because that's the thing, like, I'm learning, like, money is a tool. And we have been, like, we have created money as, like, this, like, big, like, guy that's like oh my gosh money you know but it's like if we use it as like okay like you're helping me and I want to you know help you and so like this is a tool that we use to like exchange our values you know versus Mm -hmm. like 
looking at it in, in this different way. So I'm hoping that like, you know, through time and how I'm learning and things like that people can learn that, you know, the more that we can share and enjoy what, what it is that we feel inside our heart, like we're going to be able to help everyone. You know, it's not about, Oh, I have more than you. What is that? Like, that doesn't make me feel good. You know, like, <laughs> and, and by me saying I have more than you, that doesn't make me feel good, you know, but what makes me feel good is like living in my truth, and exchanging things for value so that people know that they're appreciated for what it is that they're doing. Yeah, there's a there's a great saying. I can't remember where it comes from, but it's from a sort of a farming community. And someone said, like, I hoard I hoard my wealth in the bellies of my neighbors. Right. Yeah. Like, like I'm sharing everything I got because I know that one day the wheel will turn and I'll need their help. Exactly. So that's, that's that's my bank. That's my insurance policy is the 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 goodwill of the neighbors that I have been helping all these years. Exactly. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. like, I mean, because even for me, like I every time I swim next to someone, if I see that they are struggling, like I'm going to give them some advice. And I know that I don't need to charge them because it's something that I am excited to help them with. And it's like that's just going to bring a smile to them. And that energy is going to come back to me, whether it's if I need money at the time or if I need a new bathing suit or a new bag or whatever it is. Right. Like it mm -hmm. just comes when when you need it versus like collecting and thinking like, uh, I don't I don't have enough. And so, you know, those are terms that I am looking forward to saying I used to think <laughs> like that because this is something that I'm still in, you know, but like, uh -huh. I, I'm leaning more towards the like, Oh, I used to like, you know, be worried about how I was going to eat. And now I'm like, Oh, okay, like, cool. Uh -huh. Let me feed because like when I you know, I live in DC. And so I live around, there's a ton of homeless people, you know, there's lots of people that are needy. And you know, we're having like, there's just a lot going on. Right. And it's like and my wish would be like every single moment I can give to someone, which a lot of times if I only have a certain amount in my wallet, I give it away because I just want them to like feel special, you know, in that moment. And I think that's what like for me, like I'm learning that money is just a tool because it can help someone feel better. You know, it can mm -hmm. give them that like permission slip of like, oh, wow, like, I'm like, now I can smile, you know, versus before I'm out here begging. But now like, oh, this nice person gave me something or something to eat, you know, and it's like, it just mm -hmm. fills your heart, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and like everything else, it's it's the, the the decision points in which we practice something different, that create over time that used to like, there's never a moment where you go, up oh, changed, right? We have like rituals and ceremonies like a lot like Josh and I were talking about this as we were planning the retreat. I was thinking, hey, what if we have this sort of ceremony? He's like, yeah, but we don't want people to think that the ceremony has any magic to it. It's a <clears throat> it's a symbol. And, a, you know, and like in cultures that have um, like initiation ceremonies for adolescents or ceremonies where a person becomes an elder, the ceremony doesn't do it. The ceremony confirms what everyone already knows what has already happened. Like now, you know, you now you are an adult because you did the work. It's not like the the that moment actually creates the new reality. It, it, it kind of puts a stamp of communal recognition on it so that like I think that's what I'm where I'm coming to is like the used to can only happen in far <clears throat> retrospect after it's like, I, know, I used to be at the bottom of the mountain, but now I'm at the top. <laughs> but, but like, look how many steps they had to go right to get to the top, essentially. Right, right. And each and each step doesn't change where you are. Right. No, each individual just, step it, is, is, is trivial. Exactly. And it's always getting you to where you want, whether it takes years, right, or it takes weeks, like it just depends on when you're also ready to receive it too. Because a lot of times like change, right, is like difficult. Like a lot of times when I'm coaching people, you know, and 
they'll tell me the same story over and over, you know, and it's like, it's okay. Like maybe you aren't ready to go to the next step, but Mm. maybe, you know, then all of those like lessons and all of that coming in and saying, well, I did it again, you know, maybe then all of a sudden you're going to get inspired to now, you know, change some things a little more, right? Because it's never like, it's not like it's bad or anything. It's just that like, how far do you want to go? You know, do you want to stay here for a couple years? Or do you want to go here for, but it's all like gathering this information so that you can get to essentially that top of the mountain or that goal that you're striving for later on, you know? Right on. All right. Cool. All right. I think can end it there. Let's end it there. So as always, yes. Murgata, Sarah Bowfinger, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kathy and Elizabeth, for your comments. Thank um, you. Can you see comments? You can't. No, I can't oh. see comments. I oh, can I see should them tell after. You them, Kathy Hester, I love listening to both of you. Heart, hearty emoji. Elizabeth Thank Howdy you. and love that the ceremony only confirms what has already happened with some emoji that could be like smiling or <laughs> maybe that I think that's hands, but it could be like soap bubbles, like maybe they're foaming at the mouth. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very emoji literate, so uh, sorry, <laughs> Elizabeth. I don't, don't know what that is. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. That's awesome. And yeah. we'll see you on the next. Yeah. Now, the, the next, next now. now, the next now. <laughs> All right, that sounds like your book. See you. Yes, the next now. Oh, I like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.